Hello. Today I wanted to tell you guys uh, the way that I clean clay pots. There are several methods that people use for cleaning and sterilizing clay pots um, when they're new or when you're reusing them. They are a bit more expensive, so it's good to reuse things when you can. Um, there's a whole article in the AOS magazine in one of the digital back issues. I'll leave a I'll leave a part or a what do they call it a note in the description of when that was. You can only access that if you're a member um, of the AOS, but they have all the digital back issues in on the website for members. So that's a huge, huge. I think they all go all the way back to 1952. Okay, so the first thing you do, or I do, is you need to remove any bits of roots or and organic matter from from the pots because that's where disease hides. And the viral loads in orchids are particularly high in the roots. I usually use a scouring pad, maybe with a bit of soap or a wire brush um, under under running water to get as much of that out as I can. Some people put them in the dishwasher, but I don't do that because I have hard water and I don't want to add any more salts to the pots or um, soap residue. So, after you get your pot all clean and scrubbed out, or if it's a new pot, you want to get the salts out. Now, I don't think that most pots come with salts in them, but I did buy some recently from a craft store that did have some salts in them. And if it's a it's a pot that you're reusing, it's going to have salts in there no matter what. So, the way, uh, let's see, na 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 na, I took some notes here. Oh right, also, LECA, like First Raised Orchids, has, um, they talk about, they talk about salts being in LECA and that you need to soak soak it at least overnight, but I did that recently and it wasn't enough. I still got salts coming out and damaging the roots. Um, so, the, so I don't know, I guess the way that I'm going to start doing that is I'm going to use the same process for my LECA as I, as I am for my pots. And having a TDS meter is really handy, but it's probably not necessary because when you're leaching the pots, the water does change color. But with the TDS meter, you can see, now these have been soaked and boiled a few times. Oh, 81, 82, that's very good. It was 500 the other day. We're on like day three or four of doing this. So, the way that I do this, I put my pots in pure water. You want to use clean water like distilled, reverse osmosis, rain, or snow. Fill up your pan. Put a bit of, put a bit of vinegar or citric acid, some kind of weak acid will work. And then take the TDS reading, if you've got a TDS meter, because that will affect the readings. And then all you do is you just boil it. I boil it for about, I don't know, 10 minutes. And you keep the lid on because the more water that evaporates, the the more the salts concentrate in the water. And you don't want salty water staying in the pot. So put a lid on. And, uh, and then I let it soak overnight. And I just leave it on the stove. Whatever, it's fine. Then the next day, take your TDS reading again. See what that is. If your water is kind of dirty looking or like golden yellow. I know it's kind of hard to tell on here, but when I'm looking at this water in real life, I can tell that it's not clear. So you're going to have to re repeat this process a few times over a few days. <clears throat> and then after, after you get your TDS down quite a bit, you can stop putting the vinegar in and just use pure water because you want to get the vinegar out also. Okay, then after you've got your pots all leached, you want to sterilize them. And some people soak them in a 10% bleach solution, and I don't do this, and I don't recommend it for clay, because even after you've scrubbed really well and gotten as much stuff out as you can, you're probably still going to have small, small particles of disease, possibly disease-carrying organic material in there, and the bleach can't kill that. 
The uh, And also, if you've got organic material in your bleach, it kind of makes it not work as well. It inactivates it a little bit. So, I don't know. I'm not a fan of bleach. And then, the second reason that I don't recommend bleach for pots is because they're porous. And there are bound to be tiny, tiny spaces where there are air bubbles that the bleach doesn't get to. And then maybe those viruses will come out when you water and infect your plant. The third reason I don't like to use bleach for cleaning clay pots is that bleach is toxic to plants. So you have to get it back out of the pots after you've already leached them the first time. Um, I don't think leaching with the bleach, I don't think you could combine those steps because you're just putting more salt in there. I don't know, maybe you could. But... And once you've got the bleach in the pot, you cannot use acid to leach it out faster because you'll get chlorine gas, which is toxic. You never, never mix an acid with bleach, or acids and bases in general have bad reactions. Like if you've ever mixed baking soda and vinegar, you know what happens. But that's not a toxic reaction. So, um, and also you have the potential of recontaminating your pot's in soaks while you're trying to get the salt or the bleach out. So the easiest, fastest way that I have found to do it just in my home with regular stuff is you put them in the oven for 450 degrees for an hour. You can also use the self-cleaning cycle, um, the oven self-cleaning cycle, and I think that may burn the salts out and it would definitely take care of any organic material. And, uh, I don't know. I just think, I don't know if that would work. I have, I have not tried that, but it's in the article, and if you've got, um, if you've got access to it, you can read about that. Cracked pots are not affected by boiling. They're not affected by, by, uh, putting them in the oven. The thing that cracks pots is, I don't know, like, I think even if you put, see this, see this pot that has a chip on it? Even if I put that in a kiln, oh, scratch that, you know what? Back when I was in pottery, we would have stuff, and it would get cracked, and then we'd put it in the kiln, and then we'd put it in the kiln again, and it was fine. Most of the time, you only had stuff blow up if you didn't let it dry all the way first. That said, putting wet pots in the oven is fine, I've done it. Um, yeah, if it wasn't, if it wasn't dry all the way, they would blow up, or if you had, if you didn't need your clay previously, then the, the air can't escape from the pot fast enough, and that could blow it up. But, um, cracks, no problem. The only thing you don't want to do is put them in cold water after, like, if they're coming out of the oven at 500 degrees, and you put them in ice water, that would probably crack them, because the material is shrinking faster. It's like from going from expanded to shrinking really fast. So that would probably maybe do it. I don't know. Haven't tried. So I just put them in the oven. It heats up slow enough and cools down slow enough that it's not going to crack your pots. I've reused these over and over. I've boiled them on a roiling boil. I've put them in the oven many, many times. Never had problems. And even if you do lose a pot, it's a pot. It's not, it's not a plant. Like, what's more expensive, a pot or a plant? The plant is. So do you want to take the risk of possibly infecting a plant trying to save a pot? I don't. I don't. I'd rather sacrifice the pot. So, um, yeah, that's, I guess that's everything I wanted to say about cleaning clay pots. If you have any questions, please let me know. I am usually pretty good about getting back to people. And, yeah. Th okay, I guess that's everything. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for watching. Have a great day, and happy growing.